So we continue on our lighting circuits wiring diagram and we're developing it further once again. But let's just revisit what we have looked at in previous videos. We did a one-way lighting circuit. We're gonna be using those skills today in order to develop our new drawing. We did a two-way lighting circuit, two-way and intermediate, which again, we're gonna need those skills on today's drawing, and the joint box method. So this is our drawing today. Lots of stuff on here now that we recognize. Consume unit, hopefully we recognize that as a one-way switch. These two here as two-way switches and an intermediate switch. And these are ceiling rows and pendants or batten lamp holders. I do recommend you go back and check out those first three stroke four videos with the joint box one as well. There should be a link in the description to download the drawing uh, blank versions for yourself if that link is broken in any way, just leave me a message and I'll see if I can sort it out. But at the moment, there is a link in the description so you can download these before you start. So let's think about what's going on here. One consumer unit in the installation, and we've now not just got one light and one series of switches, we've actually got effectively a couple of rooms here. So this light here is controlled one way from this switch here. And then we walk into a separate room where we have another lighting point controlled by three positions, so that's our two-way and intermediate switching here. So it's a little bit more uh, developed than we've done before, meaning that we've got to work out which terminals we're using again in our ceiling rows and pendant or batten lamp holder. Let's just re-familiarize um, ourselves with the consumer unit. All of these here are gonna be wiring diagram connections. So where we stick the cable in these accessories here will help you wire it in the real world. However, as we've said in the previous four videos, the consumer unit itself, this is not laid out as you would actually connect your cables into it, but we've got the symbol for a fuse, the neutral link, and here where our CPCs will be connected into our earth bar. So we're gonna be using exactly the same cables as we've used in previous videos. We're gonna be using one millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables. And we're also, because we've got two way and intermediate switching, be using our three core and CPC uh, cables again, one millimeter squared for us at college, often 1.5 in the real world. Okay, so let's start by bringing a cable from the consumer unit up to our lighting point. Remember our lighting point can be something like this. So this is our batten lamp, batten lamp holder. We've got a series of two connections for our switching line, three connections in the middle for our loop, and three connections for our neutral. So that switching line, loop, and neutral. Exactly the same base, maybe slightly different laid out, but it's just manufacturer's change. Okay, for our ceiling rows and pendant, switching line, loop, neutral. Okay, and that's what we're representing in these two positions here. So a cable from the consumer is gonna come up to our first lighting point. We're using the three plate looping method in all of the videos we've been doing. So this cable would be here, our PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable from our consumer unit into our lighting point itself. And if we remember from all the previous videos, we must make sure that the permanent line connection is gonna use any of the three connections in the loop. Remember, this here is just a solid brass block with three holes in it, and it wouldn't matter which hole you went into, but you're just gonna choose the one that you wanna go into. So again, solid brass, brass block of three, wouldn't matter which hole you go into. So let's bring the line conductor up and I'll see if it lines up with any of the holes. So I'm gonna bring my line conductor up and it's gone bang straight into the middle one of the looping terminal. So that's my line conductor. I'll bring up my neutral. So I've got two and three. So this is switching line and this is neutral. So again, any of these three could be used as the neutral connection. Remember, you're probably gonna be using a ruler. And we're going to our neutral block and then we've got our CPC. This here is our CPC terminal. Just here is our CPC terminal in our actual uh, pendant or ceiling rows and batten lamp holder. Right, so let's bring the green one up. And I'm just gonna kick that one in. And as in previous videos I've said, sometimes people do like to leave a little yellow stripe up the side to make it look a little bit more like a CPC. So there we have our first cable. Our one millimeter squared PVC, PVC, twin and CPC cable, and we've identified the CPC as we would when we finally connect it with green and yellow sleeving. So that's our first cable in. We're gonna control it from this switch here. So we're gonna bring a cable down to here in order to control this one one way, and then we'll develop the circuit over to here. In order to do so, we're still gonna continue on using our twin and CPC cable. Remember at Tresham College, we're likely to be using for this part of the circuit, a twin brown. So this conductor here would be brown and this one as well as the CPC. 
In industry, it's often common to see this twin and CPC cable taken down to a switch, and we have to do something that we've discussed before in the video with the blue conductor. When we're using this to feed from the switch, so from the ceiling rose and pendant down to the switch, in this method, we're gonna to need to identify the blue not as neutral as switching line, and that means introducing brown sleeving over the top. So we'll draw it as a blue conductor and identify it with brown sleeving because it'll be switching line. Let's start off by taking the permanent line down. So I'm gonna come down, out, and I'm gonna line it up with a common terminal of my one-way switch. Remember, you'll be using a ruler. So we come over here, we're using a one gang, and when we turn it over, we've got common and L1 only. That's a blanked off section there. So common and L1, that's a one-way switch. One position can turn on that lighting point. So one gang, one way switch. So that's what we've got here. So brought our line conductor into common, we'll bring our neutral, no it isn't, remember, it's not a neutral, it's blue, so it won't be coming out of here, it's gonna come out of here for a switching line conductor. So that's why our students get a little bit confused when they start connecting up the ceiling rose and pendant in this method, that it doesn't always mean blue is neutral. So with that in mind, this one here, which will be my switching line conductor, I'm gonna come out of there, and it's gonna come into L1. So if I bring that out first, we can bring those two up, and then we try and make those match. Okay, so if it isn't a neutral, I need to identify it. I need to identify it with brown sleeving. Brown sleeving being that, for us it's the brown pen. So I'll just put a strike either side of that one to identify that as a switching line, and same down at the switch itself. So in this case, this is not a neutral, it's a switching line conductor. Leaves us now for the CPC. CPC terminal here, we've got plastic boxes at college, so the CPC is just connected into the back of them. Often in colleges I've seen online, they're actually using metal boxes on the wall, as if that was gonna be chopped into the wall, and obviously they're a little bit more robust, and it breaks so quickly, break a lot of boxes at Tresham College. So if you're using a metal light switch box, there'll be a terminal in the back of it. Likewise, on the plastic one that we use, there'll be a CPC connection in the back of the plastic box. Leave it long enough in case we ever change these fronts for metal ones, and we'll talk about that as an exposed conductive part in another video. Consumer unit to ceiling rose and pendant or baton lamp holder. Cable down, one millimeter squared, twin and CPC cable coming down. Remember, the blue is now a switching line and not a neutral. Supply comes up to the looping terminal, goes down, to the common, that's permanently connected, so that's permanently live. We close the switch, that switching line conductor comes on to here and will energize the lamp. So the lamp will have a connection from this side and a connection from this side. They don't need to be colored. Sometimes these can be white. I've done a video on that as well, but they can be colored as well. So that would go off to what would be the actual lamp itself. So with that in mind, we've got a neutral this side, to the lamp and we've got a switching line this side that when we operate the switch, we close the switch, we put a line conductor, a switching line conductor onto here, the lamp will illuminate. When we open the switch, we break that line conductor onto here and the lamp will go out. So that's our simple one-way lighting circuit repeated, but we've now got to bring a cable into the next room. We're gonna bring across a one millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable. From this lighting point in the first room, a cable is going to come across into this room where we could have any switching arrangement we like, but I've chose two-way and intermediate switching arrangement. So we need to bring a permanent line into loop. We need to bring a neutral into our neutral connection and a CPC into our earth terminal. Start with the CPCs first. Simply bring the CPC across and connect it to the same terminal inside the ceiling rose and pendant or baton lamp holder. Let's go for our neutral, take out our neutral, and we'll bring that one across. Gets a little bit untidy, so you gotta be very careful where you're gonna bring your cables not to show them clashing too much. So if I bring that one through here, and we're gonna go into our neutral terminal, and then we've got our permanent line connection out of our loop. So we come out of our loop, we come across, and we go into our loop terminal, like so. So what we've got here is this cable here, our PVC, PVC, uh, one millimeter squared twin and CPC cable, bringing our line neutral and CPC, our permanent line into loop, neutral into our neutral terminal, and our CPC into our earthing terminal. 
then we just carry it on down, don't we? We know what's gonna happen next. We're gonna take this cable down to our first switch, and then we're gonna interconnect our remaining switches using our three core cable. So let's just take this one down first. So we're gonna bring a brown, brown conductor down, and we're gonna bring our um, switching line conductor. So we've got that blue again that will need to be identified with brown sleeving. So I'm gonna try and line these up the best I can. It won't matter which one of the two looping terminals I chose. So let's choose this one here. So I'll bring that brown into there. So that brings my permanent line down. I've got blue. Remember, this is not a neutral this time, so it's not coming out of here. Just because it's the blue pen this time, it's a switching line. So we're gonna need to identify it with brown sleeving. So we're in our blue, like so. And let's make sure while we're here, we identify it both sides. So that is actually a switching line. And then our CPC. CPC comes down, and we'll just crack a little bit of yellow on the side. So that's what we've done there. We've brought our first cable down. So we've brought our switching line, our permanent line and CPC down to the first switch. Exactly what we've done here, but we had a one-way switch. Remember, we've seen how we can develop a one-way to a two-way and a two-way and intermediate in those first three videos in this series. We're now gonna bring our three core through our system. And this caused a lot of controversy on Instagram when we were looking at this is which color do people choose as their common connection? We always choose black. Um, so we're gonna be got our three core cable. So we're gonna have our brown here, connected to our brown here, which is our permanent line. We're gonna have our switching line or the blue one here, connected to gray and black is gonna go into common. You can choose whichever system you want. Um, if you choose brown as your common, that's great. But at college, that's what we're gonna do. And you can see how the permanent brown one connects also to the brown one in the three core. Hence, we use black as common. So let's bring those colors down now then. So we need uh, brown, black, and gray. So if I start with my brown, brown conductor, we'll link through here. So what we're showing here is our two-way switch. So we've looked at these before. So again, it's a one gang two-way switch, we've got a common, doesn't matter where I put it, whether it's at the top or the bottom, so we've got a common and an L1 and L2. Sometimes they're labeled L1, L2 and L3, but often that's one on its own is called common L1 and L2. So we've come out of, and it doesn't matter, I said it in a previous, it doesn't matter if we come out of L1 or L2, L1 or L2 with this connection here. And then we're gonna bring out our gray one out of this one here, which will link to our blue. So let's do that next. So take our gray, so that brings the gray of the three core into here, meaning that we link the black comes out of the common and goes into a connector in the back of the box or loose in the box. We must identify the black and the gray as switching line conductors. The cables between here are often called strappers, but we identify them at both ends as switching line conductors. So you've got the brown sleeving on. So this three core cable here, would have the conductors themselves identified on the gray and on the black with a piece of brown sleeving. So that brings that through to here. So our three core cable has gone from our two-way switch to our intermediate. This section here, as I just said, is a connection. That connection could be a Wago connector or Vargo. It could be an inshore connector. It could be a through crimp, or it could be a simple connector block. And I've done a video on all of those separately on how to connect those in switches. So any of those could have been chosen to join the black to effectively the black coming down. All we're gonna do now is take this three core cable and repeat it once I've put the CPC in from here. So you can see we've got the CPC to put in and we'll repeat the process down to our next switch as we did in a previous video. So let's take the CPC down from here and just strike it yellow and complete that cable between the two. And then we go again. So we'll take the brown from here, at the other side of the switch, and we'll have a look at that switch in a minute. We'll take the black, let's link the black from here to common. We've got our gray conductor through here. So our three core is coming through to our other two-way switch. Let's not forget it this time, the CPC down to there. So that puts our other three core cable in. So what we've got here is, so let's just find it, this one here. What we've got here is our one gang, just this one here, one gang intermediate switch, two terminals, two terminals. And we've drawn exactly as it would be there, top and bottom. Again, they can be labeled L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, L2, L3, L4, however they're labeled, but it's the top two and bottom two. 
and we're going to bring our cables in from one cable is going to come into the top and the separate cable at the bottom never across the side so i wouldn't bring the brown and gray from one cable in the side and the brown and gray from the other in this side you bring in a brown and gray from one cable into the top and now at the bottom, a brown and gray cable from the other cable going down. And that's a common mistake people make when wiring these up and then find when they're testing it, it doesn't always turn the light or on or off. It's because you've usually got the connections wrong in your intermediate switch. So let's identify these again with brown sleeving, both ends. And then what we've got is our completed wiring diagram for now a more complicated circuit consumer unit feeding a lighting point which happens to be one way switched, a cable taking the supply through to another room, and this time we've got two way and intermediate switching to control this light here. To complete this light, all I need to do is put the conductors in that would be connected to the lamp, like so, and then depending on the switching position, the lamp will either be illuminated or not. So that that's our wiring diagram for a more complicated circuit. As I said in the start of it, hopefully you can download all of the drawings in this series of videos from a link in the description. And you can start building up your wiring diagrams and getting familiar with where the cables go, especially in the intermediate switch. Again, I use black as my common, so it's connected in the connector in the back of the box. And I use brown and gray through my actual uh, intermediate switch as well. Be careful with the connections on the intermediate switch. Be careful with the connections in the intermediate switch that a cable comes in the top, brown and gray, and a separate cable at the bottom, brown and gray. Real top tip that is. So hopefully this um, completes the wiring diagram for a more complicated circuit. I'll probably go on and do some more um, wiring diagrams, maybe looking at the two plate method and wiring in conduit as well. But that um, pretty much gives us, I think, five in this series of videos so far. So I'll probably go off and do something slightly different. Next, as always, leave your comments below, and I hope this video has been some help.